First, let's bring in the latest Democratic senator to jump into the 2020 presidential race, Kirsten Gillibrand of New York. She joins us from Iowa. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Martha. Senator, you tweeted that the proposal is a bad deal, saying that since Trump ordered the end of DACA and TPS, he is only temporarily giving back what he took away and calling the wall pointless and ineffective. So is this proposal a non-starter for you? It is. It, it doesn't recognize the importance of uh, what this debate's about. Uh, Democrats will protect this country. We believe in border security. But to not protect all dreamers, uh, to not recognize the suffering that uh, f families who are here are facing, uh, to shut down the government to get his own way when 800,000 people have not gotten their paychecks this week who might not be able to pay their rent or their mortgage or food or heat, uh, it's outrageous. And he's just playing politics. And this is a bad deal. It does not do the things that would move this country forward in a productive way. Senator, let me just read you what the what President Trump just tweeted. He said, amnesty is not part of my offer. It is a three-year extension of DACA. Amnesty will be used only on a much bigger deal, whether on immigration or something else. Likewise, there will be no big push to remove the 11 million-plus people who are here illegally. But be careful, Nancy. Does that sound to you like he's moving a bit? And what's your reaction to that? It doesn't sound like he's moving at all. Uh, if he really wants to work on comprehensive immigration reform, open the government and then sit down with Democratic leaders to actually work on the stuff that needs to get done. Um, people need a pathway to citizenship. And we have three million dreamers in this country, and we should be protecting these young people. They came here through no fault of their own, and they've made lives. Some are serving in our U.S. military. Why wouldn't you welcome them here to make sure they can have a pathway to citizenship? That's something we're willing to talk about. But for President Senator, Trump to hold hostage public servants, it's wrong. It's morally wrong. The, the White House suggested yesterday that the president's plan is similar to the Bipartisan Bridge Act in 2017. You were a co-sponsor of that bill. Is there room for negotiation on this? So the difference between what he's offered and what we were trying to propose was we wanted a pathway to citizenship for all dreamers. He's just taking a small section of that. Those are the DACA recipients. And he's only giving them a temporary stay. So just for a moment, think about the people that he is affecting. I've met with those dreamers. And they have so much anxiety. They have so much fear. They don't know if they'll be able to finish their college education. They don't know if they'll be able to stay with their husbands. They don't know if they'll be able to continue their life. And so what he's creating is anxiety and fear in people in our community people that we care about, our families. And it's wrong. What he's doing, again, he has no compassion for anyone. He has no empathy for the struggles and the hardships that he's placing on people, whether it's the government workers who aren't getting paid or the dreamers who are contributing to our country in amazing ways. He doesn't care about anyone but himself. But, but, so but Senator, about what, what about that wall? Is the wall for you a non-starter? If you got what else you're talking about, could you live with a wall? Well, his idea for a wall is ineffective, and it's not going to make us safer. I, I will support border security. I will support investments to make our country strong and safe. All Democrats care about national security and border security. But what he's done is he's confused America. He's tried to create fear and division. He's tried to say immigration is about terrorism. Immigration is not about terrorism. And you should separate out those two things because we need to invest more money to keep our country safe from terrorism, to stop human trafficking, to stop gun trafficking, to stop drug trafficking. We want more funds to go there, absolutely. But we do not want the inhumane treatment of people seeking refugees refugees, re refugee status in this country, people seeking asylum, moms and children divided at the border is immoral. Putting people in for-profit prisons, spending all that money that we're supposed to be spending for border security Se and Senator, against I, terrorism, I wanna, against I, I want to just stop you for a minute because I was on the sure. border this week and I talked to the chief yeah. of the San Diego sector for border protection and he said we need that wall so the agents can work on other problems down there, drug smuggling. What is the matter with a wall if somebody who's standing there every single day says we need it? Um, I've heard a lot of interviews, and I've talked to border security uh, officials as well. 
and they need resources to do their jobs. But they've also said that the way President Trump is conducting uh, his immigration enforcement is destroying their ability to actually do anti-terrorism. I have a letter from 19 ICE agents written to the Secretary of Homeland Security saying that what President Trump has done under ICE is making it impossible to do their jobs. There's two jobs for border security and ICE. ICE has to do um, anti-terrorism, anti-gun trafficking, uh, anti-drug trafficking, and anti-human trafficking. That's on one side. The other side is immigration enforcement removal. All the money's going to immigration enforcement removal, and what that means is you're defunding anti-terrorism, which is a huge problem. The money, Martha, is going for these for-profit prisons running, run by companies like GEO, and they're literally locking up families in prison-like settings and, and not only demonizing them, but creating inhumane places for them to wait for just to, the chance to be considered as a, 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 their asylum claims. So, so, so Mitch McConnell says really he'll cared. Mitch McConnell says he'll bring this to a vote next week, but he needs 60 votes to even start the debate. Will the Democrats block that? Mitch McConnell's not letting us vote on the things that could pass. Um, I don't know why he's not standing up to President Trump and doing what's right. If the president said one way or another he's going to get this wall. So what's the strategy for Democrats if he declares a national emergency? Well, Martha, let's go back to where you started. We put a deal on the table a year ago to say, we will give you the border security money that you want. We will let you start doing the things you want to do, but you must protect all the dreamers. That was something we were willing to talk about. That is still there for him. Uh, the fact that he's saying three years just for DACA just shows that he's not serious and he doesn't actually care about moving the country forward. I, I, I do want to ask you. Why Martha, which is one of the reasons why, Martha, I am running for president. Because I tell you, we have to stand up to this president when he's wrong. Um, the country has to reclaim this democracy, has to open government, put the power of the people back in our hands. And Senator Gillibrand, uh, I want to ask you about your run for president, which you did yeah. announce this week. You've been facing scrutiny for past statements about immigration when you were a member of the House. You called securing the border a national security priority. You voted to increase for ICE, and you opposed amnesty for undocumented immigrants. I know you've said you're embarrassed about those statements, but are you confident Democratic primary voters believe you? I do, because the truth is what President Trump is doing at the border today is inhumane. Uh, immigration has always been our strength. Our diversity is our strength. We are a nation of immigrants. Our story is about that if you come here and you have a dream, you can earn your way into the middle class and make America stronger. But how do those we voters, how do those voters believe you? Maybe you'll change your mind about something if you became president. Well, Martha, 10 years ago when I became a senator, uh, my job was to represent 20 million people, 20 million people in other places around that state that might have had different concerns and worries and fears than my upstate New York rural district. And so I listened to them. I met with leaders across my state, uh, leaders like Nadia Velasquez, about what was happening in her community and how families were being torn apart. And I promise you, Martha, the reason why I'm running for president is I will fight for their children as hard as I would fight for my own. I will fight for all Americans' children as hard as I would fight for my own. And that's why we have to fight for these moral issues. It's why we have to fight for health care as a right and not a privilege, why we need better public schools, why we need better job training so anybody who wants to work hard can earn their way into the middle class. It means rewarding work, helping unions organize, helping workers get better training for higher wages, equal pay for equal work, affordable daycare, universal pre-K. Those are the things that need to be fought for because I do care about other people's children. And so I would tell voters, look at my heart, see who I am. I believe I have the courage and the compassion and the fearless determination to do what's right, uh, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. I'm a fighter. I've always been a fighter. I will fight for your kids as hard as I would fight for my own. And that's why I am going to run for president. And, and, and Senator, lastly, I want to get your reaction to the BuzzFeed report suggesting President Trump instructed his former attorney, Michael Cohen, to lie to Congress about a proposed Trump Tower Moscow deal. The special counsel's office disputed that report. What was your reaction? And did Democrats seize on that report? too quickly. Uh, the report is highly concerning, Martha. It just shows more evidence that perhaps this president did obstruct justice. It shows uh, that... Um, Even though the special counsel disputes it? 
Martha, it raises a question in my mind that is very serious. And so what we need is Mueller to be able to finish his investigation. And one of the things that I'm most concerned about is that Senator McConnell will not let a bipartisan bill come to the Senate floor to allow us to protect that investigation, to make sure uh, he cannot be fired prematurely. And, and, and the law says he can only be fired for, for cause. And so what our bill does is it goes to a judge. So a judge can make an in-camera decision about whether this was done properly and preserve of all the evidence. So we have to protect the Mueller investigation. We need the facts. And so this just shows how urgent that investigation is. Okay. Thanks very much for joining us this morning, Senator. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.